Welcome to this video application note brought to you by the Analytical Scientist and Marx International. It is entitled Highly Efficient Monitoring of VOCs in Stack Emissions Using Sorbent Tubes Analyzed by Thermal Desorption GCMS in Accordance with European Standard Method CENTS 13649. Our presenter is Dr. Caroline Widdison, who is the Product Marketing Manager for Thermal Desorption at Marx International, a specialist manufacturer of analytical thermal desorption instrumentation, associated sampling equipment, and time of flight mass spectrometry. Caroline participates in many standards and regulatory committees, including CEN, ISO, ASTM and BSI, and works closely with industry, test labs and research institutes to equip and advise on the analysis of VOCs and SVOCs. Caroline, over to you. Thank you for the introduction, Rich. Volatile organic compounds play a key role in photochemical reactions in the atmosphere. In particular, they contribute to the formation of harmful particles and are involved in the generation of low-level ozone. Moreover, due to their toxicity, many VOCs have significant impact on human and environmental health in their own right. Emissions from industry contribute significantly to global levels of man-made VOCs. And as a result of this, in 2001, the European Technical Committee for Air Quality, CEN TC264, released a standard method that defines the procedure for monitoring VOCs from stationary sources, as in stack gases. And this method was called CEN TS13649, and will be the topic of our discussions today. CEN13649 involved the collection of the airborne vapors onto glass tubes packed with activated carbon. Following this, they were extracted the analytes with carbon disulfide, and analyzed typically using gas chromatography mass spectrometry. However, in the years since this method was released, thermal desorption has become far more popular than solvent extraction for the analysis of airborne VOCs. This led to a review of the revised edition method of 13649, um, which lists as an alternative to solvent extraction and specifies the collection of airborne vapors onto sorbent-packed stainless steel tubes followed by the analysis of those tubes using thermal desorption GCMS. Now, thermal desorption is now widely considered to be superior to solvent extraction, uh, mainly for reasons of practicality and analysis performance. So its inclusion in CEN TS13649 brings this method into line with other national and international standards for VOC analysis. Now, what we can see on this slide here is a comparison of solvent extraction and thermal desorption for VOC analysis. So if we have a quick look at these, we can see that they basically uh, form around the ease of use and the reliability of the results. The first section looks at the repeat analysis of a sample. Um, it's really affected by the high volatility of the carbon disulfide when using solvent extraction. However, using thermal desorption repeat analysis of a single sample is straightforward. Not only is it straightforward, but you can recollect the split flows, um, improving the sample security and allowing excellent reproducibility for method validation. The solvent used in solvent extraction is expensive and it's costly to dispose of, and there's no need for solvent um, using when running thermal desorption. So this greatly reduces the cost. Thermal desorption is very easily automated and allows you to have a high uh, throughput and, and great reduce reproducibility, uh, whereas the solvent extraction process is a little bit labor intensive. Thermal desorption is known for its great sensitivity and allowing all of the sample to be sent to the detector if necessary. In this case, we have high concentration samples, so normally we, we would look at splitting as well. Solvents are relatively toxic and uh, lead to uh, an increased operation risk, whereas there are no solvents used when looking at thermal desorption analysis. The tubes for thermal desorption can be reused up to 100 times and reduce waste. The solvents used um, in thermal desorption are generally uh, hydrophobic and they reduce any water inf interference, uh, unlike the charcoal solvent, which is hydrophilic and increases water interference with the GC column and detector. Um, with thermal desorption, you're looking at using metal tubes, glass tubes, or inert-coated stainless steel tubes um, can also be used. However, for solvent extraction, only glass are used. So let's have a little look at how thermal desorption works. And thermal desorption is a two-stage process, and it's a versatile GC pre-concentration technology that's used to analyze VOCs and SVOCs, which are semi-volatiles, 
in a wide range of samples. What we do is we concentrate the organic vapors from a sample into a very small volume of carrier gas and we take it from our sorbent tube through onto our focusing trap. The tubes are filled with, sol with sorbent material, uh, typically multiple sorbents to trap a wide range of compounds. So the sample is swept with the carrier gas from the sample tube onto the focusing trap. And this focusing trap can be held anywhere down to minus 30 degrees, but typically up to room temperature as well. At this point, our sample can be split and we can take that split portion onto a clean sorbent tube and recollect it. And this is what allows us to reanalyze a single sample. So our sample is now on our focusing trap and the flow of gas is reversed through our focusing trap and our sample is taken to our GC column. And at this point, our focusing trap heats up rapidly at about 100 degrees per second and the sample is taken to our GC detector. At this point, again, we can also split our sample. So if we have very high concentrations, we can do a double split and recollect all of the anal analytes uh, from that sample. On this slide, we can see the analysis of the SEN TS13649 standard containing 100 nanograms of each compound on the tube. This is the equivalent to sampling about 300 milliliters of ambient air containing about 83 ppb of each analyte. In this analysis, trap desorption and the steep GC temperature ramp lead to good peak shape and therefore optimum sensitivity, as illustrated in the case of the challenging polar compound isopropanol. We can see the cutout here showing good uh, peak shape for that. And this is achieved whilst keeping the runtime short and avoiding any compromise in compound separation, as we can see in section C of the chromatogram. So when we're looking at source emissions, it's very typical by its nature that we have very high concentrations. And the use of high split ratios minimizes any concern um, of using thermal desorption for this analysis. So here we can see that we are looking at the system performance. And it's assessed by injecting a one microliter of the standard solution at a high concentration. We're looking at 1,000 micrograms per milliliter per analyte, which is the equivalent to 300 milliliters of ambient air at a concentration of about 833 ppb for each analyte. And this is put onto the sorbent tube using a calibration solution loading rig. A split ratio has been applied um, of 33 to 1 and is applied during the trap desorption. So if you remember the two-stage thermal desorption we looked at, that's during the second part of that. Here we can see that we have a clear peak separation and we have quantitative analysis that has not been compromised. When we take the tube um, of the same uh, tube to see that we have minimal carryover. And what this means is that none of the compounds were at such a high concentration that they're still stuck inside the system. And therefore, we have minimized any concerns due to underestimating analyte retention. It's important when looking at a group of compounds that cover a wide concentration, volatility, and polarity that we have linearity across the range of compounds. So the system linearity was assessed by determining the ratio between the peak areas of the internal standard and the analytes at five different concentrations in the range from five to 100 micrograms per milliliter. This is consistent with concentrations that are likely to be encountered in stack emissions. The graph here shows excellent linearity for all seven compounds in the mix that we use. The linearity plots um, typically are showing here a 4 to 80 uh, ppbv in 300 milliliter sample volume. So now we're going to look a little bit more about quantitative recollection of these split flows and why it's important to this type of analysis. So as I mentioned before, during the first and second stage of thermal desorption, we can split our sample and we can recollect that split onto a clean tube. And this offers some significant advantages over solvent extraction. Uh, primarily that you can reanalyze uh, the same sample multiple times. You can also look at some um, method validation or troubleshooting, determining that all the compounds that you're analyzing have passed through the system uh, without any carryover or reaction. And it also avoids the need to collect another sample if the analysis should unexpectedly fail. So what we've got here are, are two uh, representations of recollection. The first uh, chromatogram on the left-hand side shows the original sample in red that has been split, recollected, and reanalyzed, which is shown in the blue trace at the bottom. And you can see here the identical trace showing that the uh, sample has been run twice. 
What we can also look at is looking at the, the theoretical decay of the compounds during the split and recollection and reanalysis. And we can look at whether or not the actual decay of the compounds of interest fits into that profile. And this can show us that our method is working correctly. Finally, we have an analysis of a real-world sample. Here we have a sample that was taken right next to an exhaust vent of a very busy restaurant during lunchtime. And we can see a real analysis of the air from that vent. This is really to establish the performance of the thermal desorption GCMS methodology in a real-world scenario. A 300 milliliter volume of air was taken um, using an Activox low-flow pump specifically designed for thermal desorption tubes. And the analysis was then conducted, um, as we described, using thermal desorption GCMS. Here we had an outlet split, which is the split from the trap to the GC, the second stage of thermal desorption, of 8 to 1. We can see from the list of compounds that a number of compounds that are relevant to the SEN 13649 were identified and other trace compounds were also identified. So this was a quick overview of the methodology that's now been uh, written into SEN TS13649. If you're interested in finding out more details, then please visit our website or contact us on any of the um, information below. Thank you for your time.